Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm LJ if you're new here. So today's video, we're gonna be discussing how to prevent your makeup from being very cakey. If you've ever put on makeup and after a couple hours, you wonder why it looks cakey. It doesn't really look the same as it looked like when you initially apply it. So today I'm gonna be sharing with you guys some helpful tips that could possibly help if you're looking to get a non-cakey makeup look. If you're interested, let's get into it. KLJ, welcome to a channel where it's popping. Welcome to a YouTube. Honestly, nothing feels worse than your foundation or your makeup kicking up on you after you just spend hours doing it. But I'm going to be breaking this video down into six different talking points that might help you and prevent your makeup from kicking up on you. So the first point is to make sure to hydrate and moisturize your skin before jumping into makeup. I know this can sound like a no brainer, but I used to jump right into applying primer without moisturizing my skin and thinking that primer can act as a moisturizer okay but I realized that my makeup never lasted whenever I did that so now what I like to do is I like to make sure that the texture on my skin is well moisturized before I even apply a primer so make sure that you're investing in a good moisturizer that works well for your skin type that's very important I usually use a moisturizer that is hydrating and feeds my skin all the things that it might be lacking in that morning a really really good moisturizer that I really like is a fresh deep hydration moisturizer which I recently ran out of which I need to go back to Sephora to pick it up another moisturizer that I use is the April skin Artemisia hydra gel cream you guys have seen me use Use this a couple of times on my skincare videos and everyone's skin is different so you don't necessarily have to use these ones that I mentioned just use one that works for your skin and this is what your skin should look like it should feel really comfortable and hydrated I so point number two is make sure that you're mixing the correct formulas the reason why sometimes when we apply a primer and then we go in with the foundation it doesn't blend well is because those two products probably don't mix well together for instance you can't use Use an oil-based primer with a water-based foundation because water and oils don't mix well together and it's also really important to learn what kind of skin you have because you always want to work with your skin type if you have oily skin I would say stay away from products that contain oils try using oil-free water-based foundations if you have dry skin use a radiant foundation hydrating or luminous foundation you can use a matte foundation just depending on how well you've moisturized and hydrated your skin or how well your skin feels at that time and if you have combination skin or you just don't know your skin type I would say use things that are lightweight like lightweight foundations and just build the coverage up to your liking you can never go wrong with using like lightweight foundations or lightweight makeup products because they're not rich in texture also the applicator is very important so you want to use an applicator that works for your skin type I find that using a brush on my skin causes a lot of cakiness and that's because I have dry skin so I like to use an applicator that has a little bit of moisture like a damp beauty blender a damp beauty blender will allow the foundation to blend really nicely on my skin because the texture of my skin is dry I need that moisture to help blend out my foundation I would say use a brush if you have oily skin or the surface of your skin has a little bit of moisture and oil to help blend it out because brushes are usually dry and if you have oily skin you already have have those oils on the surface of your skin that help blend out the foundation really nicely and really smooth all right so first I'm gonna go in with primer and I'm gonna use the Kevin Aquan Sensual Skin Primer this is a hydrating primer so it doesn't have any oils and I'm gonna go in with a water-based foundation so you definitely want to go in with a primer because a primer really helps get your makeup to last longer and it also helps to prevent cakiness for foundation I'm gonna be using the Bobbi Brown skin foundation so this foundation is definitely a water-based foundation and it's an oil-free foundation as well so I've used a hydrating water-based primer with a water-based foundation all right so point number three is try not to use
use a lot of foundation i feel like this is the most important thing is try to make sure that the amount of product that you're using is not too much because essentially that's what causes the cakiness i usually go in with one pump of foundation first on my face and then i blend it out and then i figure out okay do i need more um what kind of makeup look am i going for do i want a full coverage makeup look or do i want a natural finish makeup look this prevents me from using more foundation than my skin needs therefore preventing my makeup from being very cakey so point number four is focus the majority of the makeup on creaseless areas so your cheeks your forehead and then whatever's left on the sponge or your applicator you want to just lightly go around your nose area and under your eye to add a little bit of coverage don't focus the makeup application mainly on that area try to focus it around the areas that don't crease a lot and then i just lightly go under my eyes as well and then if i feel like i need more i go in with more if i feel like this is good enough and i want to move right on to concealer i move right on to concealer usually when i need more is when i have more breakouts so i only focus on those areas like if i have breakouts like around this area i just go in with a little bit more and i apply a little bit more to cover up that discoloration Okay, so point number five is to set your skin with a really good setting powder and setting spray. There's so many different types of setting powders and setting spray. You always want to use the one that benefits your skin type. For example, if you have oily skin, use an oil absorbing setting powder because your skin produces the oils and an oil absorbing setting powder will absorb those oils that are being produced by your skin. If you have mature skin, use a finishing setting powder on top of the original setting powder that you use that will get rid of the looks of wrinkles and it also get rid of like laugh lines and things that crease a lot and if you have dry skin try using setting powders that are not too drying so don't use a lot of mattifying setting powders or face powders I get asked a lot if I set my face foundation which I usually do only if I feel like my skin is really hydrated and I feel like maybe it's like on the normal side versus the dry side if I feel like my skin is more on the dry side I never set my foundation with a pressed powder but I'm gonna be setting it today because I've been feeling like my skin has been really hydrated so I go in with the NYX pressed powder and so I just dab a very small amount dust off the excess and I just press this around the areas that I place the foundation and I place it all over my mouth area and I place like a very small amount because remember the less that you use the less your foundation and your makeup is going to cake on you after doing that I go in with a setting powder and a setting powder that I've been really liking for my dry skin is this Milani translucent setting powder if you have oily skin I would say use a matte setting powder or an oil absorbing setting powder one that I really like is this makeup forever ultra HD setting powder it's perfect for setting your under eyes if you get really oily under your eyes and your nose area all right so after setting my skin I use setting spray to make sure that all this powder really sinks into my skin and it melts really nicely on my skin instead of sitting at the surface of my skin so you want to use a setting spray that benefits your skin type just the same way with the setting powder so if you have dry skin you want to use one that is luminous or radiant and if you have oily skin just use one that is really hydrating it's gonna help really melt that makeup onto your skin without making your skin produce even more oils than it should so one that I really like is this Milani make it last dewy setting spray because my skin is dry I like to use a dewy luminous or a radiant setting spray after doing that I just press this into my skin with the sponge that I used for the foundation to make sure it settles really nicely on my skin and it really helps to melt that makeup and I just lightly tap on it I don't press it too hard because when you press it too hard you're going to move the makeup which you don't want Alright, so point number six is to blot. When we touch up our makeup with adding powder onto the skin, what essentially we're doing is we're adding another layer of makeup on top of the layer that we initially have. And doing that can cause even more cakiness because applying that powder can be too much for the skin and it can end up suffocating the skin, causing it to look really, really cakey. So I would go in with a blotting powder instead of a pressed powder to touch up the makeup. You can use blotting strips or you can just use a blotting powder. The one 
one that I always, always use and I always carry this everywhere with me, I put it in my purse, is the Fenty Beauty Invisi Matte Blot and Powder. This is absolutely the best that I've ever tried and I've tried a lot of blot and powders. With this, essentially what it does is it really just helps absorb the oils on my skin without messing up the water levels on my skin. It helps keep my skin balanced but it doesn't add that extra coverage or extra layer of makeup on top of my skin. As you can see, this side looks like my makeup is really intact. It looks like how my makeup originally looked like without that extra layer of makeup. And on this side, it took away from a little bit of the blush and a little bit of the highlighter. It doesn't really look like how it looked like when I finished off the makeup. It adds in that extra coverage of makeup on top of what I initially had. Okay, so that is it for this video. Those are all the six points that I wanted to share with you guys. I really hope this video was helpful. So basically to sum it up, you want to make sure that you're hydrating your skin before applying makeup, making sure that your skin is really getting all the nutrients it needs before you start applying your makeup. You also want to remember to mix the right formulas. Don't use oils with water-based products because they're not going to mix well together on your skin and you definitely want to use water-based products with other water-based products because those go together water loves water okay water does not like oils you also don't want to use too much foundation because that will give you a very cakey and patchy look at the end of the day. So you definitely want to go in with the right amount that you feel like you need or that you feel like your skin needs at that time. And focus the makeup on creaseless areas. So on the areas where you don't have pores, you don't have wrinkles, your skin doesn't crease a lot. Focus the majority of the makeup there and then add a little bit of makeup on the areas where it creases like around this area right here where most people get pores i would say avoid putting too much foundation there because it can clog up your pores making your makeup very cakey and then you just want to focus on setting your skin really well using a good setting powder and a good setting spray that is beneficial to your skin and also you want to blot instead of adding powder on top of your skin so that's everything to just basically sum this video up if you enjoyed this video don't forget to leave your girl a big thumbs up also subscribe if you haven't already because i would love to have you in the lj family and shout out to my new subscribers that just recently joined the family i'm really glad to have you guys on my channel but other than that i will see you guys in my next video KLJ, welcome to a channel where it's